I would like to talk about how do we do GraphQL and Xperia Group. We use an experience-oriented graph. An experience-oriented graph follows the same architecture that a federated uh, gateway or federated architecture looks like, where we have clients, we have the federated gateway, we have subgraphs, and we have our domain data sources. First of all, clients will try to access to experiences using a well-defined design system. We are representing UI types. We are representing experiences. The federated gateway is a super graph that creates a query plan to divide a GraphQL request into one or more operations resolved by subgraphs. Then, at the subgraph layer, things get more interesting. After we resolve the main data from downstream, we transform that data into a UI representation using the design system. This is an example of how a response would like in a data graph. We are getting an ID, we are getting a product name, and we got other data that still needs to be processed on client side. Clients will have to apply a lot of processing on them over this response. In an experience-oriented graph, though, as mentioned, we do have a schema that is experience-oriented. We represent UI capabilities. In this case, our response is still going to be for product listings results. But as you can see, in the response, we are saying that we want to render a search result card. This response contains data that is going to be mapped against the implementation of the design system on clients, making this a minimal effort for clients to make the query and then just map the response against the domain types. The idea of shareable experiences is that we want to break the UI into multiple components, each one using his own GraphQL operation. One GraphQL operation per component allows sharing the experience across multiple applications. And then we treat a UI as a composition of multiple components, allowing us to define templates. If a page is a composition of multiple experiences, that means that we'll have multiple GraphQL operations. Would that mean that we'll have to send multiple requests to the server? Not really. This is where batching comes into the picture. Batching is the process of taking a group of GraphQL operations and combine them into a single HTTP request. With the addition of the Apollo client, this is how consumer and experience-oriented graph looks like right now. Let's assume that we have a client application that is a composition of six uh, components. Notification, header, notification, product search results, another notification, and a footer. All these components are going to be exposing his operation to the Apollo client, and then the Apollo client is going to grab all those operations and send one single request to the federated gateway. Then the federated gateway is just going to trace and create query plans for each one of the operations that are in the batch. But there is a problem with this. When a batch request is handled by the gateway, the gateway will concurrently execute all operations in an independent way, causing the query planner to send separate requests to subgraphs. So for this one single batch request that goes from the client to the gateway, the gateway is sending six requests to subgraphs. And it's not only about performance. With this, we lose the capability of using data loaders, batching the duplication on subgraphs when we try to communicate with downstream. So we needed to fix that. We created a custom data source that allows sending batch requests from the gateway to subgraphs. This is an example of one of the most used operations uh, at Xperia Group. It's called Notifications Query. Per day, we have more than 300 million requests. And this is the results uh, before and after turning on this new feature. So with this, uh, this is how we, uh, now we can see the consuming and experience API with batching. We still have uh, the Apollo client. The Apollo client is going to be grabbing that request, the gateway is going to get a request with one batch operation. And then the gateway will be sending three batched requests to subgraphs. 
that's how it works, but now let's proceed with the demo. All right, so for the demo, I have two gateways running at the same time, on port 8080 and on port 8081. On the port 8080, I am not batching to subgraphs. This is the gateway uh, running on the port 8080. This is the request that I'm gonna be sending um, to that specific instance of the gateway without batching. If I send the, re the request, I grab the response, but if I take a look at the logs, we can count one, two requests into the astronaut's subgraph, and one and two requests into the mission's subgraph. Those are the four requests that we are sending without using batching. So now, let's take a look at the gateway on port, running on port 8081. Here is where we create a remote GraphQL batch data source. If I send a request to the gateway running on 8081, I get the response, and if I take a look at the logs, we can see that now the astronaut's subgraph is only getting one batch with two operations, and the mission's subgraph is getting one batch operation with two queries. So those are two requests. So that's uh, the demo that I uh, wanted to share. So that's it, and thank you very much, everyone, for joining. <laughs>